So this is a clip and it's me um, talking with my students and going over certain key concepts that is kind of sometimes hard to wrap your head around. I talk about ulnar variance here. Oh my gosh, I remember when I studied this, I had to like read it over and over and over. I'm like, ah. Oh. So I know that you might have some issues with uh, grasping certain concepts or you just want to be able to do it faster, feel more confident about it. Well, one of my students have actually said like she was so thankful to join this type of program because it wasn't enough just to read it and it was so helpful for her in terms of how I explained it. And then another student of mine said that it was kind of like cliff notes for reading the chapter. So I'm not telling you not to read the chapter. I think you should read the chapter. But some of the videos that I have in there, it really is kind of like cliff notes. You know, I'm reading it, I'm breaking it down, those concepts for you, and I'm telling you like, what are some key things that you can focus on so that can help your understanding and decision-making process when you study for this exam. And not just when you study for this exam, when you see patients in your clinic, because now you're the specialist, right? So watch this clip, and if you are someone who's studying for the hand therapy exam, and want some help, this program, it's great. It's got accountability in it. It's built in 12 weeks, focus, focus, focus on very key topics, and I lay it all out for you. On top of that, you get a video library that you can access to and learn at your own pace as well, but we are gonna be focused in certain at certain times, so I want you to be able to come to me with questions because then we get on a live call, I lecture, I teach, you know, I help you through the different concepts that you're having issues with of that particular topic. So this one was all about risks. So enjoy the clip, and if you're interested, I'm gonna include that link below for you, all right? So if you're not ready, just hit subscribe, and you can get more videos just like this. Enjoy the clip. The distal radius is the moving bone. The, the ulna is stationary. Right, so. so the radius moves on the ulna, right? So if you take a look at the radius, I should draw this a little bit more, to, a little bit more to scale, sort of. So this is the ulna, this is the radius, right? So here, right here is your D-R-U-J. This is a joint, okay? And the radius, um, if you look at the anatomy of the radius, the radius is the one that's like free to move. So every time you turn your palm up and down, um, it's the radius that moves on to the ulna and it tends, it pushes on to the TFCC. So the, the radius, let me see if I can draw this a little bit better, right? So we have a particular tilt which is, I think, 20 degrees here. Um, if you're looking at it this way, this is volar, right? When they talk about ulnar variants, um, when you're in neutral, they're equal, right? They're essentially equal. But when you're in pronation, Let's see, let's put pronation over here and supination over here. So when you're in supination, your, your radius is higher and your ulna is lower, lower, right? So this is a negative variance, like a, it's because the, um, the ulna moves proximally. So the, the ulna moves proximally, right? And it's not just because the ulna moves proximally, but it's the radius moves distally, right? So that's a negative variance. And then in pronation, it's the exact opposite. So this is the radius, and then the ulna goes and moves, is a positive, ulna variance and the ulna moves distally right so when you turn your palm up and down 
your your the position of your ulna and your radius is going to change right and what happens in supination and pronation is that in both position it puts pressure onto the tfcc so essentially here's your tfcc right so when you look at your wrist every time you turn your palm up and down it rotates here as well so when you when you go into pronation think about not only does this length move up and down but when you move when you grow into pronation you're going to have your um on the side lord stick out right which means that when you go into pronation, your ulna moves dorsally. So if this is dorsal, this is volar, this is dorsal. When you go into pronation, that, that ulna pushes backwards. That's why you see this. That's why you see that ulna styloid. When you go into supination, that ulna styloid moves volarly. Does that make sense? Like, so I like to use my, my hand a lot so I could kind of visualize and see it. And in pronation, um, in pronation, you're going, to, you're going to see that that ulna moves dorsally. So it's gonna move back. That's why you see that ulna styloid. And in supination, you're gonna see that ulna go volarly, right? And so when you, when you rotate your arm, when you do um, supination and pronation, you've got, you've got, the, you've got the radius that, that acts upon the ulna and they're moving and shifting. And in both positions, they put pressure onto the TFCC, right? And the, what the TFCC does is it tightens up to give stability to this joint right here, 